Hey, hi, Internet. This is John again. I know you don't usually get to see my beautiful face, but uh, this time I think it requires a uh, face-to-face explanation. Uh, it's been about 90 days, so woohoo. A lot's happened since I last made a video. I've moved apartments, as you can tell. It's a little different now. I moved the bench, obviously. And then I got it here, and I started messing around with it a little bit, trying to get it to make better prints. And it's making some decent prints. Um, this is a coupling. Doesn't look too great, but some of my better stuff, like I showed you in the last video, is my X Access motor mount. Let me grab that. It's probably my best piece so far. It did have a little strings because I, I used cool to make sure that it, it made a good shape. So it's making good parts. I know how to build the machine. Uh, when I got down to this new apartment, I invited Nick to come over and collect on his Kickstarter pledge reward, which was the plastic parts and the hardware, the nuts and bolts. He lived nearby, so I invited him down. We spent a day working on his Prusa, Prussia. He, was, he went home with the motors mounted and electronics waiting, waiting for electronics to be done. And I believe by the end of Memorial Day weekend, he was test printing. So it's a good jump start to get someone to help you. That my machine kind of sat on the back burner while I helped him get his started. And I was waiting for some new parts. When I did Nick's machine with him, I helped him along by giving him all the hints and tricks that I learned making mistakes on this one. Uh, anyone that can tell you that's built their own machine, there's a bunch of stuff you didn't expect to happen. So. I built this machine and I made a bunch of mistakes and then when I built the next machine I fixed a lot of the mistakes that I initially made on mine. So I went back and I redid mine pretty much from scratch. I took everything off except for the frame, rejigged the frame, tightened it, plumbed everything out again. Uh, it looked a lot better the second time. Didn't have some of the issues I had the first time. Uh, but the bushings that uh, Neil or RepRap Log Phase or Space Exilo whichever one of his aliases you want to use. Um, he uses bushings. You can't really tell here, but these, these are bushings. They're just brass tube cut to fit and uh, to go over the smooth rod. And if they're not perfectly aligned, they won't work, as he told you in one of his videos. Now, that has some problems with me because it's hard to glue them in. Because not only are you gluing in the PLA bushing, if you were using PLA bushings, but you also have to make sure that that brass bushing stays inside that plastic bushing and then that has to be glued inside the axis. So what I've done instead, let me turn this around a bit. What I have now are what I like to call sleeves. This is a sleeve. Uh, it's a brass tube, 11 30 seconds inch, and it is just long enough to cover this area. So when I put it on here, it slides really well. Now, when I put it on, it was really straight, and I don't have to worry about it ever, ever, ever becoming uncalibrated with the other one versus just having two small pieces of brass or two PLA bushings. This is guaranteed to slide no matter what. The first thing that will happen is that the glue will come off the uh, idler or whatever axis you use in there. <clears throat> I did the same thing for my bed. I've had major problems with my bed, and I've fixed it using this sleeve system. So. My recommendation is if you're not going to use the PLA bushings that come with it, which seem to be okay when I used when I built uh, Nick's with him, but I use these brass sleeves and they work pretty good so far. I have noticed a very uh, have noticed an increase in my stability in my z-axis when I did move it. So when I did get started on my new on my machine again. What I had was what Botmail sent me for a hot end, something like this. Okay, brass nozzle, 0.35 millimeter, I think. Uh, PTFE and peak, I'm not sure which one's which, but it worked pretty good for a while. And I, I, I used it, and then uh, one day I started noticing that there was some uh, silver PLA coming out of the side right here with the the white part meets the brass nozzle and there's supposed to be a little screw on tip right there that goes in and it was broken and that's where it was leaking from so when I tried to remove it it snapped and I ordered a new one I actually emailed Botmail through their website and asked them if they could just sell me just this piece they said sure no problem and then the next day 
they had all these pieces on the website individually, which was great. So I ordered them all individually. I ordered this piece, this piece, and this piece. That's all I ordered. Pretty sure that's all I ordered. A new barrel, a new heater block. I think I ordered all, well, pretty much everything here twice. And what they sent me was this. This might not look different, not too much. But it goes to, that is not the same thing. Okay, it's an upgrade. No doubt this is an upgraded new version that I've seen on MendelParts.com. And uh, it's a little different than the one pictured in Mendel Parts. This part is not threaded on the outside like it shows. But it's the, pr pretty much the same system. It uses a heater core inside there and the nozzle is interchangeable. So the heater block and then the nozzle and then this part of the barrel. And it goes right on to that. Nice and snug. Fits all the way down. And then you have it. Oh, I did get, they sent me a whole new kit with not just this part, but a new resistor and a new thermistor. It's a much smaller thermistor than the first one I got in their, their kit earlier. So I tried to assemble the new block using the new parts. Uh, the thermistor wasn't reading. The new resistor, which is, happens to be this one right here, doesn't fit snugly in there. It's too big. I can't squeeze it in without breaking it. I'll probably have to drill this piece out to use it. <clears throat> So what I ended up doing was tearing apart my old heater block, taking out the resistor, which was pretty corroded from all the heat and use, my old thermistor, a much smaller one, or a much larger one, and uh, taping it right there using Kapton tape, or as I like to nickname it, Krypton tape for some unknown reason. My resistor barely fit in there, barely, not even all the way, uh, but it worked. It heated it up, so I taped it all up, everything looked fine. Well, I did this and I installed it right there on my extruder. Let's zoom in. I mounted it all up. It looked nice and great and perfect. I started using lock nut or nylocks instead of just regular old hex nuts. Put that on, pushed filament through it, worked just fine. Step. Once I did get everything hooked up and ready to start printing, I went to test my axes and axes. And my Z, Opto, I turn around, everything's working fine. Turn around, I hook it up, and it won't go down. My Z axis won't go down. It's because the negative end of my IR sensor here just fell out. It just got tired of being moved around. It just fell the fuck out. So I ended up taking that off, looking at it, shopping around, trying to find a place to buy a new Opto and bought mill has them for $30 for a full set. I was ready to order it and then I went to Ulta Machine, Utila Machine, I'm not sure how you say that. Um, they have just the Opto itself for like $235. So I ordered four of those, three of them for this machine and one or three of them for the next machine I built and one for this one. And I ordered those and a new thermistor and a new resistor. Thank goodness I did because I didn't know I was going to crush this the next day. But while I was waiting for the shipping, I decided to get frisky and learn how to solder. As if anyone's been following this, that's watching, you know I don't solder. So I decided to start soldering. I picked up a solder kit from Radio Shack for 20 bucks. Come on, boy. There we go. This one right here. And I just uh, I tried it out. I had to hack it a little bit, but I got it back into the form factor. And uh, let's go on there. Okay, that just fell out. Soldered that up, started working. So now I have new optos coming that I don't really need. And then I tried to make a print and I realized I was seeing puffs of hot air come out instead of filament, plastic. So I took it all apart today and what I discovered was that this barrel is much too wide compared to the older version. I'm not too sure, I haven't researched it as of this night, but I'm pretty sure that this set is supposed to come with a piece of plastic made out of this material that is just a tube that goes inside there. Because when I pulled it all out, this is what came out. This is PLA, silver PLA. Anytime you want to focus. Anyway, okay. So, silver PLA, what it ended up doing was just folding over itself several times and then clogging. Not fun. 
my and my extruder was not moving. That's how I noticed it. It wasn't pushing the filament anymore. No matter how much I pushed and pushed and pushed, it was just not heating up. So I took it apart and I spent a few minutes trying to figure out what happened. So what I'm going to do is attempt to hybrid these two. I went ahead and trimmed down this piece of plastic, flat, flush, right down there where it broke. And then I drilled it out, and now I can push that in. So now the I won't have the same problem I had with the last barrel. The problem I'm gonna I foresee is that down there, way down deep. Oh well, you can't see it. Way down deep is a little lip. And I'm not sure if my filament is gonna fill that void and do the same thing just further down right between these two sections right here. So worst case scenario, this section right here fills up with PLA and starts oozing out right through here, the same way it did on the other one. Best case scenario, it works just fine. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit. I might be, have some luck because there is a small lip right there, so it has to go up and over then back down, so I might be okay. And uh, we'll see what happens. So as it sits right now, I'm waiting on uh, Altil machine, Util machine, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, waiting on the parts from them, which are shipping. Very fast shipping, I highly recommend them. And I'll be able to rebuild this whole nozzle business from their parts that they're sending me. I repaired my own opto, but I'm getting new ones, so in case it breaks again, I'll just put a new one on there. I'm pretty sure this coupling that I printed earlier, you can't really see it in the video, is going to snap soon. I'm gonna use this one if it snaps. The point is, I can print parts. I can order hardware and I can cut it to the right sizes and I can help you put it together. Um, I'm just having problems right now with all the online stuff and when I order these components right here, instead I get these components that come with their own set of problems. So this is the nature of this project's beast. That's been my last two weeks, really, dealing with all these problems. So that's this video update this time. Uh, sorry, I don't have any more to report right now. There are a lot of problems that pop up. This is the nature of the project. Um, I will keep you up to date. Uh, I do have a blog. It's John Ecker, J-O-H-N-E-C-K-E-R, dot blogspot dot com. And it follows a narrative of... Carolyn, my Prusa, Prusa um, herself blogging my experience building her and working them for her, basically. So just get on there, check it out. Uh, she kind of hates me a little bit, so I get it. I hate me too. All right, guys, that's all I have for this time. Talk to you guys later.